extension to the Arona Way, but we are also acknowledging today the marvellous growth in the development of this airport has seen since we opened here in 1961. Of particular interest to me as chairman has been the very encouraging financial performance which the airport has delivered in recent years. We now have broken all previous passenger and financial records for four consecutive years, and we are here again on target this year for another record performance. And I can assure everybody here today that it is Arianta's intention to have further investments here, approximately six million on projects already in hand. All of us locally who are users of this airport know the wonderful service that we all do get from this airport, and it is no mean achievement to each and every one of the staff here at Cork Airport. And it gives me great pleasure to formally acknowledge that and to say a big thank you. brings Cork into uh, a new era, a new dynamic for the airport and an increase in its international stature at a time when uh, the whole aviation uh, industry is developing a pace uh, in Europe. From the long of the on shop, and on law all in shop, an arch all in shop, I call to us the factors all in for airport copy or a middle market.
On November the 14th, 1959, I stood in a farmyard in Cork. This is the farm. It stands there still. I watched as the gates opened to admit the first bulldozer. Less than two years later, I stood here again and saw this, the neat new outline of Cork Airport. Now the airport has been tried and proven. It has doubled the traffic expectations of its planners. Cork Tower to Echo Kilo Bravo, Cork landing conditions, wind 310 at 13 knots, visibility of 25 nautical miles, light showers, altimeter setting Queen Nan Howe, 1007 decimal 3, temperature 14, transition level 30. Like the other new Cork baby, the Cork dockyards just a few miles away, the airport has become an immediate success. The talk is that the planners expected 30,000 people to use the airfield in its first year. It's safe to say now that this figure will be doubled. The airfield covers 500 statute acres, cost over a million pounds to build. The main runway, 6,000 feet long, is 50 yards wide. Concrete covers nearly a quarter of a million square yards of the airfield. A gentle landing and another friendship comes in with a full load of 40 people. It's a clear day today, but in the stickiest of conditions, the airborne pilots can depend on the modern instrument landing systems with which the airport is equipped. Since the airport opened in October, up to the 30th of June 1962, 40,000 passengers went through the airport and 193 tons of freight. In July, the airport had passenger traffic amounting to over 10,000 passengers and handled 38 tons of freight. It's expected that August and September figures will be higher still. Note the name on the plane, the patron of Cork Finbar. Catering services at the airport are in the hands of CIE's catering subsidiary, Ostrana Umpen Ehren. This restaurant has special sprung floor for dancing, which will be a regular feature here in the winter seasons. It's obvious that Cork Airport intends to make itself a name as a gourmet's paradise. In addition to the restaurant, there's a very spacious bar, three times the size of that in Dublin's main airport building. The public rooms are particularly tastefully designed. All the work of design has been done by the department's own officials under their architect, L.M. Carroll. Some of these people used to fly through Dublin Airport. Now they save a 320 mile road journey and the cost of it. Others are flying for the first time because the air age has come to Cork. Others still used to come in by sea from Fishguard, but it's also a fact that the Inners Fallon doesn't appear to have suffered a traffic loss as a result of the coming of Cork Airport. The overall passenger traffic through Cork is well up this year.
And this is what it feels like to be a bag. In addition to Aer Lingus, four British airlines operate regular scheduled services through Cork. Cambrian, Starways, Derby and Jersey Airlines. Aer Lingus is the major user with over 50 flights a week. To Dublin or England or Europe, wherever this plane is heading, it is another pointer to Cork's new importance on the world's airways. two, of course, sad and joyous memories. Obviously, you've had them in the airport here. You had the India crash, and you did a super job with it. I happened to be in America at the time, and Cork Airport was flashed all over American television. And other than the fact that it was a very sad occasion, I was very proud to see Cork Airport on every time I switched the television on. But it was a sad occasion. There was another sad occasion for me when uh, in what was it, 1968, the uh, Aer Lingus crash down off, um, off the southeast coast of Ireland. Particularly sad for me because the pilot was, to me, Barney O'Byrne. Barney O'Byrne, who was a great friend of mine. He was a golfer who played for Connacht. I played against him. He was at my school, and he was a great friend of mine. It's also sad for me in the sense because the previous evening I met him in Oliver Plunkett Street and the two of us went into a pub by there he had a lemonade and I had a drink and we were talking golf. And the next day I find this, I lost a great friend. Now all of us lost many, many friends and acquaintances on that awful crash. However, these are the things that you have to, these are history, these are the sad things. But all the joyous things make up for all that. The book obviously is a mind of information. Um, I was thinking to myself that it ought to be on every school curriculum, not just for Cork, Munster, indeed for Ireland.
an airport at Cork opens up uh, the tourist industry in the whole south of Ireland. Secondly, of course, there is a considerable immigration that has been in the past, and there still is from Cork. The airport enables our immigrants to get home quickly to see their people and to see the old place at home. And thirdly, Cork, of course, is uh, an industrial centre. It's a growing industrial centre, and the proximity of the airport to the city enables businessmen to go and come uh, from the continent quickly. It is the gateway, or perhaps I should say, uh, the air gate to the south of Ireland, and in particular to Cork and Kerry. An everyday scene is Ireland's newest airport as passengers disembark from an Aer Lingus plane. Businessmen perhaps commuting, maybe holidaymakers flying in from the sun, perhaps yachtsmen over for the weekend or anglers seeking Irish waters, perhaps. One way or the other, they go to making up the airport's success story in the jet age, though this scene would have been no more than a visionary's dream a few years ago. Cork Airport is being extended for the first time since it opened, something that reflects the buoyancy of its figures. It's been like that from the start. The target for the first six years was bettered in the opening 12 months, and growth has exceeded planning every year since then. For the year 1962, which is the first full year of operation uh, at the airport, we had 76,000 passengers. This figure has been steadily increasing at a rate of 20% per annum up to the present. And in, in 1965, we handled 136,000 passengers. During the current year, uh, we expect the traffic to be of the order of 160,000 passengers. This rate of growth, 20% uh, per annum, is rather higher than the average rate of growth for most other European airports, which is probably due to the fact that Cork was a newly opened airport. But nevertheless, we expect that the, the rapid rate of growth will continue over the next five years, after which time it will probably level off to the European average. Our offices overseas have themselves, uh, in areas which otherwise might not have heard of Cork Airport, have highlighted both the airport and the various amenities in the area of the south of Ireland. I think I could best describe our attitude to Cork Airport by saying that its success is our success. Cork Airport has often been described as the Cinderella of Irish airports and perhaps not without some justification. But as airports go, Cork Airport is comparatively young and last year it was in the red to the tune of £327,000. But the Chief Executive of Air Inter, Mr James O'Sullivan, feels it will take another 10 years before Cork Airport is really out of the wood. Whereas Cork Airport is showing growth in passenger traffic every year, the average growth being somewhere between 8 and 9 percent. That rate of growth means that to have uh, our expenditure matched by the necessary revenue, it would take the best part of 10 years to achieve a break-even situation. Well, now, what do you reckon is your biggest single problem here in Cork at the moment? Our biggest single problem is that the rate of growth, as it stands at the moment, is not sufficiently great to achieve a break-even situation sooner. And, of course, it means, which is a very important thing, that the airport is not uh, being sufficiently utilised uh, to ensure that the area gets the maximum benefit out of what is a very fine airport. But you do see a good future for Cork Airport? I certainly do. If it can't make a profit, what then is the justification for having an airport in Cork? Very simply, the pro provision of an airport at Cork and the maintenance of an airport at Cork is a continuing act of faith by successive governments in the well-being of the area, the community, business, uh, commerce, tourism, 
the promotion of new industry, the attraction of industry, all this is, is assisted by the presence of an airport of Cork. And the travelling wasn't all one way. At the same time, many Japanese engineers were coming to Ireland to help with the building of the cork plant. Ashtugyal is an Irish expression. Literally, it means a bright journey, and that's a good description of my visit to the southwest of Ireland. It was never done. You'll excuse me if I get a little carried away, but for me, it was a very special experience. Take a flight to Cork, my friend said, full of enthusiasm. You'll arrive right in the middle of one of the most beautiful places we've ever seen. Well, I can tell you they were right in more ways than one. Sad to say, I'm back in Cork Airport now for my return flight. And oh, how I envy all those lucky folks with a holiday in Ireland's southwest ahead of them. Flying into Cork Airport turned out to be a really clever decision. Being an enthusiastic traveller, I have seen many airports. What a very real pleasure it was then to experience Cork's instant friendliness and hospitality. As airports go, Cork has a lot in its favour. Small, cosy would be a better description, but so efficient. We have your car for you. It's just Minutes after touchdown, I had completed all of the formalities and was collecting my self-drive car. Have a lovely time. Bye-bye now. Hello. Can I help you? Okay. Right. C'est pour rendre une voiture. It was obvious that at Cork Airport, they take considerable pride in the speed, efficiency and courtesy with which they deal with travellers. They took great pains to stress the unique condition of their airport on the doorstep of Ireland's beautiful southern counties. It's easy to see why they are self-confident. With so many airports miles from anywhere, it was a pleasure indeed to drive out of Cork Airport, turn left and find the city just down the road. And what a pleasant place it is. Old, yet modern, it is all the informality of a provincial town and yet I was left in no doubt that this was Ireland's second city. Behind the historic charm, the place is vibrant and ambitious, with all the facilities you would expect in a city of its size anywhere in the world. I have listened to music in many countries, but nowhere more than Ireland does the music more accurately reflect the mood of the country. Both are ever-changing, but somehow seem to keep in sympathetic pace with one another.
Unfortunately, it's all over, for this year at least. Back at Cork Airport, I'm longingly watching all the happy people just beginning their holidays. At least I've got some very special memories. Attention please, Air Yemta wish to find passengers travelling to London that the duty-free and tax-free shops are now open for sales. Intending passengers for London are reminded that there was... But back to practicalities. There are some excellent bargains to be had in the Cork Airport duty-free shop. A strong bias, of course, in favour of home-produced products with world-class names. Irish Crystal, Irish Linen, and, inevitably, a large selection of Irish whisky. A magical, smoky spirit with a unique taste and a long history. At least I'll have a taste of Ireland to take home with me. And the friendly faces at Cork Airport are a pleasant final memory to keep with me until I can return again. Zero degrees, one eight knots. The two semi-state bodies, which run the national airline and the country's airports, are locked in battle over next summer's flight schedule out of Cork Airport. Air Rienta says that Air Lingus intends to cut seven direct flights a week from Cork to Paris and Amsterdam, and another seven direct from Cork to Birmingham and Manchester, and instead put them through Dublin Airport. Those allegations have been made by Cork Airport's general manager, Mr. Jerry Houlihan. He's described those responsible as metropolitan mandarins and has reminded Aer Lingus that it runs a national airline, not a metropolitan one. I have reminded them that they have an obligation, a national obligation. I think perhaps they need a room in this case. Now, I am not a, a socio-economic commentator, uh, but I can see that uh, I don't Rating, and that is a polite word, I will use in this instance, that this reduction in the value of services, the content of services to Cork, is not in Cork Airport's interest, it's not in the city's interest, it's not in the interest of the community at large in the West.
This is a statement by the Regional Director of UK of Air India. On behalf of Air India, I regret to have to advise you that one of our aircraft AI-182 from Montreal to Delhi and Bombay via London was reported lost in the early hours of the morning. The 747 aircraft lost contact at approximately 0715 hours GMT, 180 miles from Cork. The total number of passengers on board were 322 crew. Of the 303, two our latest information available is that the wreckage has been sighted, three bodies have been picked up, no sign of survivors as yet. The passenger list will be released once next of kin have been informed. Our ambassador in Dublin is also in contact with us and we have been advised that approximately 10 more bodies have been incited, have been sighted. He also advised that the last contact at 0710 GMT when the aircraft was cruising at 31,000 feet. Everything was reported as normal. Everything was reported as normal. That was when the aircraft was cruising at 31,000 feet. We lost contact at 0716 GMT. The police at the conference have just advised me that RAF Nimrod are searching for the wreckage. Two surface vessels one helicopter and Irish warship are searching for bodies. Some bodies have been recovered. The cause of the accident is not known. At the request of the British police, the passenger list will not be released till the next of kin have been informed. There were 23 passengers for London. These were basically non-revenue passengers. There were seven first class and 296 economy passengers destined for Delhi and Bombay. The commander of the aircraft is Captain H.S. Narendra. H.S. what? Can you spell that, please? N-A-R-E-N-D-R-A. He joined Air India in 1951 and has been a senior commander since 1964. The police have set up an emergency number at Heathrow, 01-897-6333. End of statement. Thank you. Well, I'm not from Air India, by the way. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the flash in my I'll get copies for you, okay? There is um, a large slick of fuel about four and a half miles long and a lot of wreckage on the surface. And as I say, some bodies have been found. Is it correct the wreckage is all in small pieces? There are small and large pieces of wreckage. What was it like when you first saw the scene? Like an aircraft crash. When we left the scene, there were two vessels operating there, one from the Irish Navy and uh, one civilian container ship. How many bodies did you see? When you arrived, how many bodies were you able to see at the first glance? We have recovered four, and others have been recovered by other aircraft and ships. Tonight, one helicopter brought 12 bodies and another brought six, and more helicopters have been coming in almost continuously with more bodies. The bodies arriving tonight appear to have more serious injuries than those we saw arrive in the afternoon. These have been mutilated as if by an explosion, and some were missing limbs. The airline has issued a statement saying there were seven first-class passengers and 296 economy class destined for Delhi and Bombay aboard the ill-fated airliner, plus 23 passengers for London, described as non-revenue earning. At four o'clock this morning, the drone of engines resumed as the line of helicopters headed once more to the search area off the Kerry coast. 
130 of the 329 bodies had been recovered yesterday. With 747 now a day in the water, the wreckage is drifting east and scattering over a wider area. The naval vessel Emer is replacing the Ashling, it on its way to Hall Bolan. An American C-130 plane is today coordinating the search activities. Over the radio we heard of a new danger hampering the search activities. Despite the danger of sharks in the water, a Gemini from the Emer goes to collect wreckage, the area marked by a coloured flare. From a naval helicopter, a winch operator descends to try and recover a section of the 747's galley. With no answer as yet available for the plane's abrupt end, each piece of wreckage is vitally important. The winch operator made two brave efforts to get hold of the debris, but eventually he admitted failure and the work was left to the, to the Navy. Early this morning, the government jet brought Dr. Fitzgerald to search headquarters at Cork Airport, where he met the Indian ambassador and conveyed the sympathy of the people of Ireland on the tragedy, still suspected by many as having been caused by a bomb aboard, something the Taoiseach himself did not rule out. He also met Air Reint staff on continuous operational duty throughout the night and he also met members of the army who guarded the RAF helicopters at Cork Airport. The arrival of 43 relatives tonight brought home forcefully in human terms the scale of the disaster. They arrived from London where they'd been waiting for several days, anxious to know if their people, husbands, wives and children were amongst the bodies found, but with no hope of seeing those bodies for some time yet. The relatives had come from Delhi, Bombay and Montreal. Nine o'clock on Tuesday night and a Euralair flight of Irish pilgrims was being delayed at Cork Airport. The plane was destined for Lourdes, but an anonymous telephone call warned there was a bomb on board. With a full security alert in progress, three items of baggage were taken from the plane and security staff rushed off with them to a field beyond the terminal building. The whole affair turned out to be an elaborate hoax. It was a prank airport staff could have done without. The past five days, they have worked as never before. The interest of people all over the world is centred on Cork. In a leading city hotel, press activity began yesterday morning with a briefing by senior Canadian foreign minister official. Many of the reporters had been working through the night, trying to reconcile deadlines and different time zones each side of the Atlantic. They're nearly all first-time visitors to Ireland, including Canadian television's Bill Cunningham, a veteran of Vietnam War and the Kennedy assassination coverage. Bill, how does this compare with the other uh, tragedies you've attended around the world? Well, considering the size of the airport and the number of staff, the way that the Irish people, the officials, the airport officials, the police, they've handled the telephone people, it's been much better here, much more efficient, much more cooperative. Uh, the Irish uh, people here just seemed that they just couldn't do enough for the press during this, uh, uh, being hosts of this unwelcome tragedy. It's really been a superb effort, I think. In the early hours of Monday morning, the dining room of Cork Airport was converted into an international press centre. There has been hectic activity in it since. For many, it's a question of eating while you work. The BBC alone rushed five crews to the city on Sunday. The flow continued through Monday as the international implications of the disaster became clear. Before the morning's press briefing, ITN reporter David Chater peruses the newspapers for additional information on the crash. Last minute preparations and Tom McSweeney, who has been heading RTE's coverage of the disaster, checks that a tape recorder is in order. Eventually, some 40 minutes behind schedule, the press conference begins. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very sorry for the delay in coming out here. We were just held up nearly 20 checks. For Government two. Information Service official Joe Jennings, it has been a busy time, giving up to four press briefings each day. Board Telecom is quick off the mark in responding to the arrival of the International Press Corps. It has a staff member on full-time duty at the airport. Sorry to um, interrupt you, but what sort of service have you provided here? All kinds of service. Uh, telephones, you know, we have 21. Um, excuse me for a moment. We have 21 phones here in this room. We have three in the government information service. And we have two for the um, Indian people. 
Uh, we provided three telexes and um, any kind of information, hotels, guest houses, where to buy their clothes and who's where to eat. Who's going to pay the bill for all this? Uh, we hope uh, the government. We owe them a lot of money, so they expect us to pay, I'm sure. Radio and TV personnel are to the front of the press conference. Newspaper reporters can afford to sit further back. Airport police stay on the periphery of the building. Barry, it's been a very busy time at the airport. How do you feel you've got on? Yes, it was a very busy time. It was the first time our system was really tested, and uh, we're pleased that uh, from the air interview point, uh, the system worked very well. Uh, our duty officers, our security officers, and crash and rescue services responded uh, effectively and intelligently. And in combination with the guards and the army and the uh, emergency plan in the area, everything worked well. Our biggest difficulty was the number of press who arrived in the scene. And um, we managed to, to organise that end, but it took us some time, but we organised it fairly well in the end. The catering company with the franchise at the airport has been working around the clock. In the kitchen, five chefs are on duty, with eight waitresses looking after the loads of extra dirty dishes. All of the food has been provided free of charge, with the government again picking up the tab. Kevin, what sort of an increase in traffic have you had here? We've had a four times increase in traffic over the uh, last couple of days. This is uh, unprecedented for us. We've been through the night, uh, covering the reporters, the... Um, all the, the, the chopper pilots we've been looking after all those for the past couple of days. Any food in the room where you were drinking until 3 o'clock this morning? None whatsoever. Working hard. The information desk, as well as dealing with its normal work, has had many inquiries from relatives of the disaster victims. Integrity. The information office has also been a favourite spot of Cork Examiner reporter Dennis Redding, stealing a quiet place to dictate his copy. We were fortunate enough to get hold of this room belonging to the duty officer at Cork Airport and we've used this as our broadcast point. It's been a busy time for Cork Airport. It has responded magnificently. The air show is cancelled due to weather conditions. You are asked not to approach the airport. Crowds of people had already arrived at Cork Airport by the time the decision was taken to stop the show. The Aviation Council and Air Rienta called it off because there was insufficient visibility due to the low cloud. There was anxiety about safety, but the weather would also have ruined the spectator enjoyment. The air show has become an annual event at Ferry House for the last eight years. It was being held in Cork this year as part of the city's 800 celebrations, and up to 50,000 spectators were expected. The organisers say the show was a world-class affair. Over 160 aircraft were to perform, with pilots coming from many parts of Europe and the US. Months of detailed preparation had gone into today's show. The organisers had spent about £50,000, but they're hoping to reclaim this through insurance. Despite the cancellation, thousands of people still poured into the airport throughout the afternoon in the hope of some excitement. The organisers say they're really disappointed. The hope was, I suppose, um, that we would be able to run the show and we had to wait till the very last minute to try and gauge the um, if the weather was going to give us that valued piece we wanted, then we'd go. Just how disappointed are the organisers? They're shattered and I, I really, I, I don't know what to say, it's, it's indescribable the feelings that we all have.
Airlines flight to Cork breaks through cloud cover over the airport, 500 feet above sea level. Diversions because of low cloud ceiling have been a continuous problem, and the length of the runway limits the type of aircraft which can land. It's a source of frustration and annoyance in Cork, which has been highlighted by civic and business interests, who have been complaining that the airport is not getting enough development from the government. At present, Cork Airport wants feet by another 1,000 feet and to provide new navigation aids which would cut diversions from Cork. We've put an application to government uh, from 500 feet up to 1,000 feet. Uh, we're optimistic that this extension will be granted. Um, it is vital that the airport be developed uh, for the Cork region. Will you get the size you're looking for because I see indications that government won't give the total claim you're looking for? I have indications of length of see on, on this one, but uh, I'm optimistic that we will get the, the full length. The amount of money is relatively small. Is it essential to the future development of the airport? It is essential if we want to be independent for the medium haul jets from Europe. And also to um, improve our landing system to a Category 2 system, which will reduce the number of diversions from 3% at the moment down to about 1.5%. Talking on over, Gavli and a creep new, August and son, big airport cookie of the Shervishi Noah, August News Fuda of Failure, a curve file. Continued success. Um, it's a small token here. Of course, we greatly admire. There you are. Oh, Thank you very much indeed. Oh, that's really it's been moving to come to Cork today. Goodbye. First of the airports really on my list uh, before I moved to Port uh, uh, Earlier on, we had a small grouping of area and staff. Uh, but I'm really honoured by this. I want to um, compliment what we see outside here. Um, air on a continuing display of grace, uh, innovation, um, courageous investment, uh, conviction in Irish aviation, and can I, dare I say it, in tourism. I want to again wish you well and say thanks very much for, for a person which is all the more welcome because it is expected. We're presenting this to you, Martin, on behalf of the Cork staff, and you know it's by one of Carmel for Connor from that service. Yeah, well, I happen to be a ferry man. Not a ferry man, yeah, but. This, this, this <laughs> airport covers a wide area. I'm leaving now, but I'll always remember having enjoyed with you the 25th anniversary and the return to profitability at Cork Airport, the nicest airport in the country.
under the half million person to travel to Cork Airport this year. Congratulations, it's a nice little surprise for you here. Thank and you. I hope we see you very often in Cork Airport again. to manager both here and friends. I'm delighted to be here this morning to inaugurate the City Cork Airport Bus Service and I would like to compliment uh, both Sairn and the Orienta on their joint effort. This is another step in the de development of Cork Airport and certainly I'm looking forward to exciting times here for the proposed new developments. This, as I say, is an essential service between this city and the airport and I wish the service well. here today in Cork uh, it is another phase in the development of RT Airtel service. I think it is an important phase, one that will uh, gradually extend to, to all of the area of information uh, in Ireland. It's heartening for the Airtel unit who have in their own way been quite a success in the RT organisation to be joined forces with a company that, that in the state sector in Ireland is the major success story. And uh, therefore, we just want to welcome you on board. Uh, we know we're going to enjoy working with you and in time your colleagues in, in Dublin and Shannon as well. region by virtue of this new school over the next five to six years and, and all in all it's very important for the Cork region and it's a major boost to Cork Airport. Uh, Cork Airport is one of the international airports and this will be a very significant boost to it indeed. Everybody has worked with tremendous dedication, most particularly everybody here at Cork Airport. I'm told the amount of personal contribution made by everybody at Cork Airport was quite unbelievable. There's a team spirit here which would do well to be uh, copied in various parts of our country.
be able to extend and depend on the tax team the ambassadors, not only for air reinforcement, but for the country of tourism, but to be the country as a whole. Perhaps. April 1985, Johnny Cash and his wife June Carter. And then later on that month, we had some people, I don't recognize the signatures, from the People's Republic of China.
Mayor Daly and his entourage arrived in Cork, Ireland after taking a short flight across the sea from London. The mayor was greeted by Ireland's Minister of Tourism and airport officials.